Thunder Bay Superior North MP Patty Hashu addresses Noma. That's right. He's going to give me the hook. Um, ten minutes, I've told. So he's going to give me a two-minute warning. Um, it's great to be here with you on the traditional territory of Fort William First Nation. I'm really glad that you got to hear Saul and his vision of reconciliation. It's certainly a big part of what I do now as a Minister of Indigenous Services, looking for those tools of self-determination, of reconciliation, of full economic inclusion. And I'll have more to say about that in a bit. I did want to start with housing. I'm really pleased. I've been following along in the news. I've been on the road, but following along in the news, what's happening here at NOMA, and I'm really pleased that housing is taking such a prominent role in your discussions uh, here today and it certainly is as you know a big focus of budget 2024. Um, obviously uh, we've been working on this problem since we've been elected but we need partners and we need partners at the municipal level at the provincial level uh, really everyone pulling together first nations communities um, the goal is to uh, help facilitate the build of over 3.8 million homes in seven years so that's a big number, it's a lot of work, but I know with the right partners at the table, we can actually get that done. And I think the role of the federal government is really to provide those tools of, um, of uh, really essentially investments and any kind of support that communities need to be able to move quickly. So in the last budget, budget 2024, there's uh, $6 billion for the Canada Housing Infrastructure Fund for construction or upgrade of infrastructure in homes another 15 billion for the apartment construction loan program. Um, this has the goal of supporting the creation of over 130,000 rental homes by 2031, a huge gap in many people's markets. Uh, 1.5 billion for the rental protection fund. Uh, that's to help uh, with the work of supporting renters by preserving homes, keeping them affordable. Uh, and $400 million, an additional $400 million for the Housing Accelerator Fund. And I have to say that we've got 179 ex Housing Accelerator uh, agreements signed across the region, many of them in small communities and rural communities and Indigenous communities. Um, and this is really about the underlying tools that many municipalities and small communities need to fast track the development of homes. Indeed, the Housing Accelerator Fund is estimated to be able to help fast track over 750,000 new homes over the next decade. So this is work we're gonna to have to do together. And you know, the thing that I've realized over the last uh, nine, almost nine years as a federal politician is that the federal government really is there to help the work that happens at the ground, at the provincial level, with these larger tools of largely investment and decision making around um, spending and changing um, federal law when, when we need to. Uh, to accelerate that work. In February, the Prime Minister came uh, to Thunder Bay to announce uh, Thunder Bay's successful uh, um, uh, receipt of the housing accelerator money of $20 million. Uh, this is anticipated to fast track over 600 new housing units right here in the city of Thunder Bay and hopefully stimulate the growth of another 6,500 homes over the next decade. In that announcement, um, uh, we obviously talked a little bit about some of the regional work in my own riding. For example, the township of Marathon will get housing accelerator money. Um, I will also say in Kenora, there are um, uh, $15 million went to nine First Nations in Northern Ontario, including four in uh, my colleague, it was nice to see him, um, um, Eric Melillo's riding uh, to, uh, in his riding, for example, Shoal Lake for, uh, 40 First Nations, 2.41, uh, Shoal Lake 40 First Nation, 2.1 million to build more homes. So you can see that the housing accelerator is really agnostic of um, what kind of community. It's about community's vision and ambition to actually invest in their own um, growth in their own members. Um, Rick, how am I doing? I'm good? Okay. <laughs> I, feel so, I feel so rushed. <laughs> um, I do want to say that for me it's really exciting to have a budget that's focused on uh, housing in particular. And housing um, really does support the economic reconciliation that MP Mama, MPP Mapua was just speaking about. In fact, I have always believed and I've uh, certainly supported by research that without a safe place to call home, it's really hard for people to actualize all of their other dreams and goals. And so on top of the national investments, budget 2024 adds another billion dollars to help First Nations specifically to work on closing the gap in housing in First Nations communities. Long Lake 58 is an example of how these investments are helping communities move forward. They've received money to create 36 homes in three years and another 300 plus in the next decade. 
And of course, this government, this federal government, is has really reoriented the spending with First Nations to be uh, increasingly self-determined. Uh, for far too long, the federal government has decided for Indigenous communities what kind of housing and where it should be built. And the way that the money is structured now, it's actually led by Indigenous people so that they have control over design, they have control over location, they have control over um, the kinds of housing that's going to best meet the needs of the people in their communities. I was really uh, thrilled to hear MPP Mamakwa as I walked in talking about economic reconciliation. And I think for me, one of the, the very exciting elements of Budget 2024 was, first of all, that all of the new spend that this budget proposes, 25% of it goes towards Indigenous priorities. And that's because uh, increasingly Canada and partners in Canada realize that in order for our country to thrive, indeed, everybody does have to have a fair chance to succeed and to benefit in the richness that this country has provided generations of, of newcomers. So I will say that the loan guarantee program, the $5 billion to unlock access to capital for Indigenous communities, for me, is a game changer. Now, this money will be available to ensure that Indigenous um, participants and in economic reconciliation have the ability to actually access capital and loans for capital so that they can buy into large projects and be partners. Uh, I think it's going to be really beneficial in Northern Ontario. And I think that it's going to really help Northern Ontario uh, thrive so that when people who will want to participate in large, um, large economic projects uh, need support to access capital to have a share in that project, uh, the federal government will guarantee those loans. And it's, uh, you may have seen the finance minister's comment uh, at a conference uh, just last week about this. If for some reason there is more demand than $5 billion, um, Canada is prepared to do more. And uh, we'll be very excited to see what kind of uptake this, uh, this loan guarantee um, receives, although uh, all indications are good that it's going to be used very extensively. I was also really pleased to see, in particular for Northern Ontario, specific uh, mention of the funding for Barron's River Bridge. Um, I want to thank Ontario, actually, for the partnership with uh, that project. I received the letter from Ontario just uh, days before the budget was complete that, in fact, uh, Ontario was in for half of that project. And so the Barron's River Bridge will connect communities. Um, it will provide better access to remote communities. It will also support the work that we are, have been pursuing as a region on the Ring of Fire to happen more quickly. Let me tell you that, that if you've ever seen a map, and I'm pretty sure everybody has in this room, of Northern Ontario and the complexity of the geography of Northern Ontario, it really does help you understand why it's been such a challenge to talk about um, uh, developing those natural resources. But I'll also say that full Indigenous economic participation <clears throat> is going to be a, a key element to the Ring of Fire development. And so this budget was heavily focused on how we actually accelerate that work. Finally, I just want to, am I at the finally stage? Yeah, Rick? A minute, and a half. <laughs> minute and a half, I am at the finally stage. Um, there's so much more that I would love to tell you. I, I want to just um, end with this. Uh, we have to stay focused on the tools that we know Northern Ontario are going, is going to need. And so the support through FedNor, I know you heard from Val Gideon yesterday, I think is critically important. I'm really excited about Val. I hope you all really liked her. She's an incredible leader. She's been leading at a senior level at federal government for a long time, a strong Indigenous woman herself, and doing incredible things at FedNor to make sure that FedNor has the, every potential to grow. And so I have to say FedNor is, uh, is still the crown jewel of Northern Ontario spending in terms of small and medium-sized business and economic development. I won't repeat what she said. But I will also say that federal support for uh, organizations like PARO and the um, nationally and internationally recognized Northern Angels program remain critically important to ensure that we have a strong and thriving small and mi uh, medium-sized business economy that supports everybody all throughout the region. So I'd love to talk more, but I think my time is up and uh, Rick is pulling me off. Talk to you later.